Goliath is running. This is definitely priority number one then. So I actually got Goliath. I got this rare credit. I guess it's not closed as often as maybe some people make it out, but one guy told me that they don't open it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday because it's not busy. There's just not enough people to justify having it open, I guess. And probably to give it a rest so that it doesn't break down. I rode in the back. I might try it again in the front if I see the line get shorter. It's a very slow operation. There are eight rows, four seats per row. So it can seat 32, but the, the grouper doesn't, right now isn't doing a very good job filling the train. Lots of empty seats go out, even maybe even an empty row. But I got on and the hang time at the beginning and the drop is incredible. The rest of it, yeah, when you hit those positive G's, it vibrates a lot and it's not comfortable. It didn't give me head banging, so it was fine as far as that goes, but the vibrations were, vibrations kind of spoiled a lot of it. But I love these, love the spikes. Love when you went up the spikes both directions and down them. It's a giant, it's a giant inverted boomerang. Only two of these in the United States. I hear the other one is much better than this one. And the other one would be at Silverwood. I've never really had an issue with a Vacoma rattle before, but definitely on this one I did. But Vacomas typically don't go that fast. Don't know what the speed is on this, but considering how huge it is, it's probably one of the faster Vacomas out there. If one boomerang isn't enough for you, here's another one, right next to the other one. The Boomerang Alley of Six Flags New England. Odd enough they got two boomerangs. They're right next to each other. The problem right now is it's closed. They are testing it though, so it might open. But there is a star of the show right there. Storm, uh, storm chaser, wicked cyclone. It's pandemonium. Same thing as you get at the other Six Flags parks, all the pandemoniums there, clones. Decent ride. I enjoy them. They're fun. But you got to get the weight distribution right to get some decent spinning. Like that one. That's the way to do it. Two people on one side, nobody on the other. That is how you spin. Now we had four in our train, so we didn't spin much. I rode Boomerang. I have flashback. That's called flashback here. Gives me a flashback to my first boomerang at Six Flags Over Texas. That's what they called it before it got moved to St. Louis. There's the other boomerang. This one was as good as ever, as, as good as all the others. I, I really do enjoy the boomerangs. I, it was odd. They were forcing you to go to the back row. The only thing I can think is that they may be having some kind of maintenance issues with uh, whenever people pile in the front of the train. Maybe they need the, it backloaded. If so, then I understand.
But if they're doing that just to be mean, that's another story. Yeah, people who had rode behind me and in front of me wanted the front and they were given a hard no. And you cannot go up there. You have to go to the back. It's all right with me. I wanted the back. I like the next to last row on the boomerangs. I think that's the best. In fact, most coasters, I like the next to last row. Wicked Cyclone, same thing. El Toro, Beast. This is an ENF Miler kitty coaster, and you know how I feel about the ENF Milers. And this one is definitely very good. Not the best. I do think the one at Six Flags Magic Mountain is still better. But this one is good. Rides smooth. It's got good air time. Even got some laterals on it. This is a ride. This is a ride that's just as good for the adults as it is for the kids. I rode in the front row. And a little bit of floater there. And back here, there's the eject. That's the ejector airtime right there. I just rode Thunderbolt, a 1941 PTC Woody. And it was uh, okay. It had some had some uh, shaky moments that bounced you around. Kind of like the one at Lake Compounds, um, Wildcat. But unlike Wildcat, Thunderbolt actually has some a few decent moments of airtime on it, so. At least there's a little bit of redemption for this one, so some good things, some bad things. So okay ride. Not bad though. Uh, you do not get to pick your row. You have to go to the end of the line, so whoever was the first one left off of this train gets to ride front. And they have to ride front. So I just rode Gotham City. Gauntlet, escape from, uh, oh, I'm too tired. What in the world is with the long name? <laughs> it's actually, I would say this is my favorite wild mouse I've ever been on. I just have to, I kind of cross my arms holding the lap bar to keep from getting jerked into the seats too hard, into the sides. And this one, it really, it really was quite jerky, more jerky than most wild, wild mouses that I've done, but because I held on the way I did, it was actually, it was actually pretty fun. And the, the main thing that made this good is these airtime moments. A lot of these wild mouse coasters, you hit those little hills and it does nothing. This actually gives you airtime, and it's pretty good airtime too. So really strange. I actually enjoyed a wild mouse. Just did Catwoman's Whip. Wasn't sure what this was whenever I walked up. This is the same thing. Looks like it's probably a clone of the Harley Quinn coaster at Six Flags Great Adventure. And I like that one, and this one was good too. If, there, if it's not a clone, it's awfully close. It's got that long train. Didn't count this one, but I think it is 20, 20 cars, 20 rows. So it can seat 40 people. High capacity. Um, Harley Quinn and Great Adventure, they send you around twice. Here they only send you once. That's okay though. It's a fun ride. I, I enjoy these things. It's only the Harley Quinn and this one are the only two of these I've ever done. I've ridden Riddler's Revenge. Did it in the back and then in the front. This is an excellent ride. I guess I should I guess I should choose my words more carefully. It's a very good ride. It's a very good invert. It is it's mostly smooth. When I rode in the back, it did have some uh, vibration, a little bit of bounce to it in spots, but overall, even that was fine in the front. It was it was perfectly smooth. It was a great ride and yeah, especially in the front there, you really, you can really feel the, the forces and the vest restraints make all the difference in the world on this. This is my fourth SL, Bacoma SLC, and three of the four have been very good. And two of those other three didn't have the vest restraints. If this one had the regular over-the-shoulder restraints that have the pillows right next to your head, 
I think it would still be fine. It didn't feel jerky. Didn't feel like it had bad transitions or anything like that, like the one at Six Flags America did. One at Six Flags America, the transitions were not good. It didn't ride smooth on the track, so at least the at least the head restraints are soft. But there are no head restraints here. It's just the vest, so impossible to get head banging. It's a good ride. Definitely the best of the four Bacoma SLCs I've done because of those best restraints. I love those leg choppers right there. Just did Batman Dark Knight twice. It's the B&M Floorless. It was a good ride. It's uh, not the strongest uh, floorless coaster there is, but it, it's not bad either. You get to look out over the lake. You look out over the lake as you go up the lift. You got a nice uh, zero G roll there. A couple, you got the classic interlocking corkscrews. I didn't get much of any, any kind of head banging, maybe just a light tap along the way. I did the front and the back. And it's interesting, you got uh, the track that kind of rides through the middle of the loop right there. It's a short ride, there's no mid-course brake run. I think I would put it just slightly behind Dominator. I think I actually like this layout better than Dominator, but Dominator's a longer ride. And then there was Joker, and Six Flags Great Adventure on Monday and Tuesday, you wanna ride the Joker, you'd be waiting an hour or so, maybe even longer. It was a huge line for Joker at Great Adventure, but here, it's a walk-on, it's crazy. I did four rides, I was able to do re-rides on it. But it is all about weight distribution on the Joker. So it makes it interesting, it never rides the same way. But some do seem to flip better than others. The one at Fiesta Texas is the best, it seems to me. Now the only uh, downside of it being a dead day was Wicked Cyclone did close 10 minutes early. I was gonna go for it at the end and they had already shut it down 10 minutes early. So didn't get didn't get a ride Wicked Cyclone at the end of the day. Got a couple rides earlier, but I was focusing on getting everything done today and I was able to do that. Everything except the drop tower and the uh, Frisbee, but I've done plenty of those at other places. Got all the coasters, did some water slides, and that was with getting here an hour and a half late. So yeah, I can't beat that. I, I just had to shortchange Wicked Cyclone today, but I'll make up for tomorrow. I think I've done every Goliath in the United States now. Just haven't done the one in Canada or over in Europe. Dive loop. The zero G roll is my favorite part of the ride. So you guys, so are we all going back? So a bit busier day in the park today. So trying some different things. Let's change it up. 
did this uh, Houdini indoor ride. It was very, very weird. It really messes with your perception. You feel like you're going upside down, but you're not. I highly recommend it. It was really cool. And Tomahawk. Don't know if I've done one like this before. It's kind of like, uh, kind of like the Frisbee ride, but you're facing inside instead of outside. Not as good as the Frisbees, but it was still fun. And there was no wait for it. And this is back behind the boomerang in a little section that opens at noon. At least it did today. Heartline roll near the end. You feel like you're losing speed and then you get hit with a crazy ejector airtime moment near the end there. That overbank actually is making me gray out earlier. What, the Kentucky Kingdom? I thought this was Wicked Cyclone, not Storm Chaser. Maybe that's why I accidentally called it Storm Chaser yesterday. It got into my psyche. That overbank, whenever I'm a little dehydrated, does make me slightly gray out. I love that stall. That's a, it's kind of a half stall. It's not like a Goliath stall. That double down is crazy. Then on the back side here, you get really yanked on that, uh, I'm not sure what that's called. I don't know if that's a off axis airtime hill or what. You got another one that's another thing similar to that later in the ride. I go, it might have been right there, right in front of me, where I could see. And I love that heartline roll at the end. Got a good, good hang time on it. at Cyborg, the indoor flat ride. I think it's new this year. It was pretty good. It's a, uh, it's not too intense. It is a bit dizzying, but it was fun. And it's indoors, air conditioned. During the ride is air conditioned. Near the Superman entrance. Seven rides I've done today on Superman, 10 in total for the last three days. I did one the first day when I had just arrived in the last hour, two yesterday when I was doing all the roller coasters, and seven today, I'm gonna do more. I'm thinking right now this is probably the perfect layout for any roller coaster that doesn't go upside down. The, the pacing is incredible. The airtime is amazing. It's like I think there's 10 airtime moments I counted on it. Some of it is ejector, some of it's floater, and a couple of really amazing ejector moments. So this easily beats any B&M Hyper. This is worlds better than Mako or Goliath. And how about a ride that's over a minute long from drop to final breaks, and there's no mid-course break run. Usually, you usually only get that on a Giga, but you got it here on a Hyper. Of course, the Ride of Steels at Six Flags America and Darien Lake are the same thing, but this is much better paced. Right, this is a much better paced ride than those, and it's got more airtime, and it's a lot more interesting. I can see why this won all the awards. That screeching sound is a little weird. Don't know what to think about that. I 
I love the two helixes. You got the airtight pop right in the right in between them. It's paced really well. Just goes from one element right into the next. That helix is very forceful. I think this is a better ride than Millennium Force. However, Millennium Force is a sentimental favorite of mine, so I like it more. But I think as far as what the ride does, this is better. Well, since there was no line and they were just about to close the gate, I went for it. So I finally rode my first Super Loop coaster. So that is coaster credit number. Uh, yeah, right. It's a good flat ride, though. It has good hang time. And I liked it whenever it was going through the inversions. So it's a fun ride. 15 laps on Wicked Cyclone today. I am going to be bruised tomorrow for sure. This thing gives such amazing airtime throughout. 16 airtime moments and several strong ejector. One, four. And even after 20, yeah, 20 rides over the last couple days, I still haven't quite figured out this layout. It's so, it's so interesting. And there's so much to it, there's so much going on, it's hard to follow it. What the Millennium Force? Night rides on Superman, getting bugs in your face. And getting seven rides in the last 40 minutes including several re-rides. Only had to go through the through the queue three times to get those seven rides. They were allowing re-rides as long as no one was in your row. Wicked Cyclone was too. Easily my favorite my my favorite traditional hyper in that it doesn't go upside down. And focuses on airtime. And I totally get it now how this ride could beat Millennium Force in the Golden Ticket Awards several years. And it slipped a bit to number five this last year, but I heard it wasn't doing well, that it, that it wasn't riding as well as it used to. This year I heard it is riding better than ever. And I would, I have no reference point for that because this is my first times ever riding it. But yes, it is riding great. This is fantastic, easily. This one's probably gonna be a top 10 also. This ride has me speechless. This and Wicked Cyclone. And the light just got turned off in the tunnel. So yeah, Six Flags New England, definitely big thumbs up from me. Granted, it's all about Superman and Wicked Cyclone. Everything else is kind of just filler, but it's decent filler. Except for maybe Thunderbolt. Didn't care much for that. At least it had a little bit of airtime, but it was also a shaky ride. And Goliath was a bad ride. But I'm glad I got on it. I tried the middle. It was just as bad as the front, front or back, so. Other than that, really great park. And I love that the water park is attached. Unlike Six Flags Great Adventure. So combined 29 rides on Wicked Cyclone and Superman the Ride, I am going to be so bruised, but it was well worth it.